Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how we pour and finish a concrete floor for a garage. Now this is a 28 by 24 garage, it's a two car garage. We were hired just to pour and finish the concrete. We, we weren't hired to do any of the prep, any of the gravel work, put down a vapor barrier. This is what the general contractor wanted us to do, is just lay the concrete floor. So that's what we're here to do. Now this thing had four feet of crushed rock in it when they backfilled it. They put all crushed rock in it. So it's going to be a really nice dry floor. We're also using a 4000 PSI concrete with uh, fiber mesh in it for reinforcement. Hey, this is a new employee I got. I want to. I want you guys to tell me down in the comments, should I fire him for being on the phone? What do you think? He's actually a temporary employee. He just needed some work for a few weeks, so I hired him on and uh, give him some work but he but he was on the phone on this one and as you can see Darren and Tia right there that they, they, they don't get on the phone when there's work to do there's no phone so you guys let me know down in the comments what would you do if you owned a business and your employee was constantly on the phone would you fire him would you warn him would you let him continue to talk on the phone how would you handle that kind of stuff so we're, we're right in the midst of, we've got two trucks here. This floor is six inches thick, so it's a really good thick floor for, our, for a residential garage. And we're going to just get this concrete dumped out. The way, here he is on the phone again. <laughs> the way we like to do it is we, when we have two trucks like this, because we pour every day, we're, we're pretty fast. We like to get this first truck dumped right out and get him out of the way so we can get the second truck backed in and get him mixing up and get him ready to go so we're not waiting for him after we get the first one dumped so we like to just get this dumped right out get it as close to grade as we can possibly get by eye Tia over there she's magging the edges to a chalk line so we we shot a chalk line around this using a laser level this floor actually slopes three inches from the back towards the front so what I'm doing right now is I'm using my I got my laser set up I got the receiver on that stick so I'm reading the laser beam and I want to make sure I have that exact same floor grade on the edge as I do right here in the center so that's what I'm checking right now and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make just a wet pad what we call a wet pad right in the concrete so I'll mag out a flat area get it nice and smooth and make sure that's the same level that we need it at and when I do that I'll mark it with a little X with my with my mag float right there that means it's right perfect. It's right where we need it, so don't walk through it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to check it again. And we'll use that to screed off from now. So you can see I'm going by that pad but with my end of the screed, and Darren's going by the edges, that Tia mag. And we'll, now we'll use that wet pad in the middle, that smooth area, to screed the floor from. So we got the first truck dumped out. He went just a little bit over halfway. And uh, that's because we got another little floor. Oh, yeah, don't do what I'm doing here. <laughs> this is how I clean the chutes out. I want to make sure I got all my concrete. I don't want to leave a pile of concrete outside on the edge of the driveway somewhere when he washes his chutes out. So I like to scrape them right down, get them nice and clean. Um, but anyway, over there behind Tia, there's that little basement area we're going to be doing too. So that's why it looks like the first truck went well over halfway because the second truck is going to finish the garage and then do that basement area. So after I get this chute scraped out and get him cleaned out, I'm going to go over there. We're going to, I'm going to help Darren get this screed. You're going to see how we screed this. We, we got a 14 foot straight edge there. It's a magnesium straight edge. And this is what we do. We call it kick screeding. So we don't have to stop and step back and screed again. We just kick the mud in behind our boots as we go and we just go from one end to the other without stopping. It's a pretty effective way of screening for us. It takes a little bit to learn this method so you're both in sync with each other but once you learn it it's pretty fast and you can pull down a lot of concrete very fast. Now I wanted to show Tia here bow floating. Tia, Tia can do just about everything we can do. She doesn't kick screed like we do yet but she does all the other stuff. T is my daughter. Let me know if you have if you have family that work in your business. I mean, I love having Tia work with us. She does a really good job. I can count on her. She shows up every morning. She has good attitude. She works hard. So, I mean, that's all anybody can look for in a good employee, really.
Yeah, you can see how me and Darren, we've been screeding together for a long, long time. Over 25 years we've been screeding together. <laughs> so it's kind of just like riding a bike for us. So that floor, it's nice and flat and level, but it does slope from the back to the front. So I guess technically it's not flat and level, but the plane is really nice and smooth on it. You can see T is running that bow float over it. There's no humps or dips. Everything's really, really good. So here we are about an hour later, and I pulled out my little 30 inch power trowel. Uh, I figured I could keep up with it with this little one. Even though it's about, it's about 80 degrees out today, it is pretty hot and the sun's going to be coming in and out as you'll see. We generally run the first pass with the power trowel. We have these, these bigger blades we hook on over the finish blades. We call them float blades. So this pass I call, you know, float, I'm floating the concrete. I'm getting out any of the bull float lines. If there is any little imperfections in the surface, you know, I'm getting all those out. This, the, the power trowel helps flatten the surface even more. If there is any little humps and dips from screeding and bow floating, this is going to help make it even, even flatter. So I get right on there. Darren's going around doing edges. T is doing some edges. And then what we'll do is we'll, I'll get off it here for a little bit and let it, let it cure up a little bit longer. I like the surface to dry up a little bit more before I just keep going over it. And that's all, the timing of that is all going to depend on you know pretty much how hot out it is how much it's in the sun so this one I had about 30 minutes I could give it before I got to hit it again you see me and Darren are over there working on the garage doors we always slope those garage doors a little bit so when the water hits when the rainwater hits the outside of the garage door runs down the door it hits that slope and it runs out the garage it doesn't run back under the door so here I am about a half hour later I kicked those uh, bigger float blades off, what we call float blades off. T is over there washing them right now. And now I'm just using the steel finish blades. They're, they're pretty much just like a steel trowel. There's four of them on there, as you can see. And that, that really starts making the surface nice and smooth. You can see the difference between the, what the float finish looks like versus the, the finish blade. And again, the timing of all this is pretty crucial. Depend, you don't want to get on it too late. Otherwise, you might have to sprinkle some water on it to work up the surface. And you definitely don't want to get on it too early either. Too early is actually you know, as, just as bad as too late almost. Because if you seal up the concrete too early, you might trap some air in there. You might trap some moisture in there. And that could lead to some delamination down the road. This is the actual speed I was running at. I didn't. I probably had it at half throttle. I wasn't really running it that fast. It wasn't curing up on me too too fast today, so I didn't have to. I didn't have to crank the throttle up too high. It was all just drying pretty evenly. Darren's back over there working on those garage doors with a steel trowel now. And T or although you can't see her in the video, she's working on the other edges as I go. The speed at which you go at with the power trial, you know, is that's going to depend a little bit on number one, how fast the concrete's drying, and your experience level. You know, just how experienced you are, how how long you know it's going to take you to hit the whole floor. Like I know a 28-24 garage with that 30-inch power trial. If I hit it at the right time, if I hit the concrete when I'm supposed to, I know it's only going to take me probably three or four minutes to go over the entire floor. And then, depending on how fast it's drying, I can decide whether I want to go right back over it again or stop. Give it a little bit more time. That's pretty much the basics of how we finish the concrete anyway. You can see how smooth that's getting. The more it cures up, the harder it gets, the, the smoother it gets too. Now you can see it's really getting smooth. So this is the, the third total time I've hit it. I was probably off it for another half an hour, 20, 30 minutes before I got back on it again this time. And you're also going to see us sawing this at the end. So we do the whole process in one day. We pour it, we power trial it smooth, we saw cut our contraction joints in, and then we strip our forms off where the doors are, and then we're done. That's it. We're just there that one day. 
because tomorrow we're on another job. We actually poured two today. This is the second pour. We poured another garage earlier and we left Luke there to finish ball by himself and then the four of us came here to get this job done. And then after this we'll go set up some more work for the for the pre the following days to get everything set up and ready to go for the rest of the week. I'm just wearing flat soled sneakers there too. It's best to wear something without a heel in them when you're finishing concrete. Something as flat as possible with not too much texture on it makes it easier to get your footprints out. But I'll shut the power trial off right there. I'll give it 20 minutes, hit it again, then it'll be done. And then we'll load the power trial up. And then we'll get right to sawing it as you're going to see right here. So we're just sawing one down the middle each way on something this size. That We found that works really good for controlling any cracks on a garage of this size that's our that's the old soft cut saw it's it's a hush varner now it's called the prowler the x150 i think i have a link for that down in the description if you want to check it out but being able to saw it the same day really saves us a bunch of time as far as having to come back the next day so if we don't saw this let's say we just leave it there's probably about a hundred percent chance it's going to crack somewhere it's going to shrink and crack and you know, then you're left with an ugly crack in a brand new floor versus if you saw it like this, you're going to control that crack. It's going to crack right in the saw joint almost, you know, 99% of the time. Rarely, there's always sometimes, but rarely do we get a crack outside of these saw joints on these floors like this. How do you guys think Tia is doing? You think she's doing a good job? You think she's a good worker? Would you hire somebody like her to work for you? Let me know down in the comments if you'd hire her. And then where you're from also. So you never know. She might want to travel. <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. But Darren's going to finish that, that last cut up right there. Then we're going to pick up the saw. And then uh, that, that'll be it for today, guys. So thanks for watching. Make sure you check out these two, these two videos coming up at the end. Uh, watch one of those and we'll see you on the next one.